From the Association of British Insurers, I'm delighted to welcome Director General Hannah Gerger. Hannah, good to see you. Um, the insurance sector and long-term savings sector has been here for over 300 years. How has it adapted to remain relevant? The insurance and long-term savings sector is firmly rooted in society and our purpose today remains the same as it did 300 years ago, where once the future had been fraught with risk, it could be made secure. But as an industry, we've always had to adapt. Our society changes around us, we as an industry change too. If you think back 100 years, who would have imagined that today we'd all be driving cars? But here we are, driving cars with motor insurance and increasingly driving electric vehicles and in the future, autonomous or self-driving vehicles. So we as an industry have to make sure that our products meet the needs of our customers today. It'd be fair to say we're living through challenging and somewhat uncertain times at the moment. So what is the industry doing to both support the economy and also customers? The insurance and long-term savings industry provides customers and businesses with security and peace of mind. We give customers the confidence to live their lives safe in the knowledge that they will be supported through the toughest of times. And we are there during those tough times, paying £18 million every day in life insurance, critical illness and protection claims. Our support to the economy is direct. We employ well over 300,000 people across the country. But we also play a really vital role in driving innovation and growth. Without insurance, no business could manage its risk and focus on the opportunity to create new products to innovate. And without long-term investment, no business would have the capital it needs to seize that opportunity. And if I can bring that to life, let me take you to Hornsey 2, the world's largest offshore wind farm about 50 miles off the Yorkshire coast up in the North Sea. This was built with the investment of UK pension funds and insurers. It produces enough electricity to power a city the size of Manchester, and that is how our industry is contributing to the UK's transition to a green economy. And Hannah, we have seen some massive global events recently that have had a significant impact on the industry. So what needs to happen to ensure that we're ready for future pandemics or similar large-scale events? The insurance industry is no stranger to catastrophic risk. Indeed, many of the products we take for granted today were born of catastrophe. But there are now some risks so great, the so-called mega risks, that we need to think again about the way we as a society can manage those risks. We need some form of public-private partnership with industry working closely with government to develop solutions. Hannah, I'm slightly nervous about asking this next question, but what's on your future risk radar? My future risk radar has a number of global threats, such as climate change or a further pandemic, or even a large-scale cyber attack that might wipe out the national grid and disrupt the electricity supply to tens of thousands of homes and businesses across the UK. These are the types of mega risk that require some form of private public partnership. We're working closely with government and regulators to look at solutions to these types of risk and ensure that the nation is prepared for the mega risk of tomorrow. Now, as the Director General of the industry's trade body, is there an area where you feel the industry could be challenged to really drive change? The industry has made a lot of progress on diversity, equity and inclusion in recent years, but we need to do more and we're committed to change. The ABI recently published a roadmap to help drive progress across the sector over the next three years. We are ambitious. We want our sector to be the most diverse, equitable and inclusive in the UK economy, but we know that's the right goal to shoot for. Why does it matter? The more diverse our workforce, the better we can serve the needs of customers across society. We want to make sure we have products that work for everybody. The more diverse our industry, the better we can meet the needs of our customers and ultimately have a happier workforce. And I think that can only be a good thing. Now, we know that millions of households and businesses rely on insurers for financial protection should the very, very worst happen. What is the ABI and its members doing to ensure that customers are confident that their insurers will deliver when they are needed most? I could reel off lots of statistics for you about the service we provide to our customers when they need us the most. Every day, we pay over £180 million to UK pension holders. And every day, we pay £38 million in motor and property insurance claims. But we know we need to do more to earn and retain customer trust. And at the ABI, we are working through our new consumer committee and with a panel of independent experts through our consumer advisory group to bring in fresh perspectives and ensure that customers' best interests remain at the heart of everything we do. Hannah, thank you. Thank you.